Andrea Gigline is with us. She always brings us something very enlightening, very educational, very informative, so we got to get to it. And today, it's when God winks. And uh, Andrea, I didn't know that God winked, but apparently you have inside information. I have inside information, and it's wonderful inside information. That book came into my life somehow or other. I was reading a review, bought it on my Kindle, and completely forgot that I had bought it on my Kindle, which <laughs> can happen in electronic mm -hmm. mediums with mm -hmm. me. Coming over to the show last month, I was trying to figure out some audio books to mm -hmm. listen to, which I always do, mm -hmm. and then I saw that, oh, I'll listen to that one. Yeah. And what was so cool was that I had actually bought it in audio format. So the premise of the book when God winks, is that we must make a conscious effort every single day mm -hmm. to see how things, coincidences are in our life and connecting. So for me, it was looking for an audio book to take, realizing that I had this when mm -hmm. I didn't know it, and then a month later, and I, I have actually a whole host of things to share with you on how just that one connection, as I drove over here for last month's show, uh -huh. how it ended up that this book then led into the book we're going to do next month, which is called Unstuck. Yeah. And it can be, we call them coincidence many times. Correct. We, synchronicity. Synchronicity, mm -hmm. uh, synergy, synergy, all of that, and it, it all applies. Uh, in a way, it's the universe working its grand plan. Correct. Can we say that? Yes, and that's exactly what he says. Because the word God for some is still a little off-putting, mm -hmm. he very clearly in the first few chapters, and you know, there's a host of reasons why this book, you know, strikes. One, he, Squire Rusnell had been the president, a very senior TV executive for well over 20 years of his life. Mm -hmm. So this is a business person at heart telling you the stories of how to see it within the business world and then in all other areas of life also. Should it also say we don't have to worry about anything? That it's there is this great plan and not to worry? Or? Oh no, mm, can that, I say something? Sure, there? sure. I, I don't think not to worry. I think it's to be aware and let it guide us. I, yes, I, I would say that the okay. worry and the guidance are two distinct topics that he addresses in okay. here. His main point is the reason you should not worry is because ultimately there is a cosmic connection and that's how he opens the book. You know, if you don't want to go to the word God, don't go there. Just know that at some cosmic mm -hmm. level, if you begin to notice in your day-to-day -day life how certain things come into your life and just make note of it because particularly now, the feeling of being alone does more damage than anything else. Mm. And many times we look for, if there's not a person, place, or thing there for us, we're alone. But, you know, I, I, I agree with the not worrying, but then along with the not worrying, I believe we have to be wise enough to take action. Ah, and that's the point that he makes. <laughs> and, 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 There's an Thank you. There, oh, there, there it is. There it is. Okay. So, uh, better than the way Rushnell, um, uh, Squire said it, was the author Eckhart Tolle in one of his original books where he said, the reason that you do not worry is that not that bad things do not occur, it is that when they occur, what you are to do is take action. You're not supposed to be worried about them. You're supposed to be taking action. That means that there is something that has to be handled. Worry is actually you you fussing about something mm -hmm. that had happened mm -hmm. in the past mm -hmm. or concerned about something in the future. So worry is not necessary. What is necessary is that you take action if something's not All right. All right, here's, here's the question then for both okay. of you perhaps. Okay, I'm, I'm worried. I shouldn't worry, so I'm not going to worry. I'm going to take action. Now I'm worried about the action I took. Well, then you're not taking the correct actions because your brain can't hold two conflicting thoughts. You cannot simultaneously be going towards your goal mm -hmm. and constantly worried that you're doing okay. the wrong goal because that means that you are going to be coming up with the wrong answer. Uh -huh. If you, you know, in the last few weeks they've done some wonderful studies on multitasking and it, it leads to why the brain can't do two things at once. We achieve the most and the best result no matter what we're doing when we stay focused on what it is we're doing. So if I have a goal to succeed at something, but I am worried that I'm not going to succeed at it, mm -hmm. the actions I'm taking are going to reflect the worry, not what needs to happen the to achieve saying, the goal. The old saying, three steps forward, 
four back. Right. Now, how does this tie? That, well, that it's tie really with, quite, it really okay. is uh, quite beautiful. So the, the author of our book for next month, You Unstuck, I get the When God Winks, I'm doing all the work for it for the show. On Monday night, I'm told by someone on the East Coast, you, you must meet this author, Libby Gill. Okay, I went through my week. I get a phone call, we connect that we're gonna talk on Saturday. Friday, I walk into a meeting of total strangers in Las Vegas, people in five diff representing five different states. The first person they're speaking about is Libby Gill mm. and her work and what a good strategist she is. And so I just laughed because that's what Squire Rushnell is asking you to do. Not only notice it, but then write it down. Because when you are feeling distressed and you think you are alone, having things written down that you can go back and read and remember, oh yeah, oh yeah, it actually will lift your spirit. Hmm. Because you'll start remembering, oh yes, these very odd things connected together, and now we can move forward. What about, does that include reminiscing? Because we were doing that at the top of the show. Does reminiscing help us? Come. As long as your point of reminiscing is not to go to the dark side. Many people reminisce as though what they had in the past was far superior to what they have at this second or what their dreams can envision for the future. And we know that from the research in aging well. Because what happens, the, the happiest people as they age, you, you're not going to be the healthiest at 90 if you weren't the healthiest at nine, you know, as sure. you were right. at nine. You know, so yeah. you, if you're holding the comparison, oh, when I was 20, I used to do yeah. this, yeah. reminiscing is not a good thing. But if you hold that up, I was so great. I remember when I mm -hmm. won that team and things were going well. Then That's that does help. Yes, it helps reinforce. So it is how you think about it. Are you appreciating the past success mm -hmm. or are you missing it so much that you can't enjoy the beautiful flowers that, as you sit in your rocker looking at? So that's... Andrea, stay there. Hold your thoughts because yeah. you're back with us on the next segment. We're going to take a short commercial break. God, uh, God's going to wink at you and tell you what to buy or what service to take advantage of. Back after this. Mm -hmm.